and welcome back to my channel. So one of the things I've always dreamed of is having a white kitchen. And when I moved into, moved into this apartment, I had these cabinets. And I really wanted to figure out a way to temporarily have white cabinets because I'm renting this apartment so I can't like remove the cabinets. So if you'd like to see how I went from these red cabinets to the cabinets now that you see behind me, then just keep on watching. So this is my kitchen, ignore the stuff on the table, and I have obviously red cupboards, and I want to change the red cupboards to white cupboards, but I'm renting, so it's all temporary. So I'm using some contact paper, and so this is going to be a process. So this is the before. So what you're going to need not a squash. <laughs> You'll need a step ladder, contact paper, scissors, and a screwdriver. Because my cabinets have these handles, I'll open one up for you. There's screws that are obviously holding the handles on. I need to take the handles off in order to be able to have a smooth surface to put the contact paper on. So my lighting is really bad right now and I have a sore throat so I really don't want to talk very long. But I did get a different screwdriver. I actually borrowed this from a friend. And my lighting is so yellow. Ugh. Anyways. So I decided to test out one cupboard before I actually film how I did it in case it was like a complete other fail and me just like scrap the video. But it turned out really well. So this is the cupboard that I did one of, just the one door. So I will film on a different day when there's actual natural light and not so yellow um, how I'm going to do them because I'm going to um, only do that one for now. I may do one other one and show you how I do it on one and then do the drawers with you because the drawers are going to be a bit different. But anyway, so we will see But success for the, se the second attempt, not the first. So as I said in the previous clip, I've done, I've, I went and I borrowed handy dandy drill from one of my friends and I decided to test these, this out um, before I filmed it again and it is the next day. So um, I've done everything except for one drawer and one regular cabinet. So I can show you guys how I did it and I'll show you the finished results. So first things first, I got to take the One of the tips I have is that it's a good idea to leave a bit of extra at the top and at the bottom because you easily can cut it off if you need to, but it also gives you a little bit of wiggle room when you're placing it so that it doesn't have to be exact because you can either cut it off or fold it um, around the back side of the cabinet because once you have too little or you have it to be exact, it's hard to place it once it's stuck. You can take it off and on, but you don't want to do that so many times that um, you lose it, it loses its adhesive. Because I'm leaving extra, I don't need to be so spe so like specific when I am measuring it right now. Um, like before, when I was trying to do it, I was trying to make it so that everything was like maybe an inch more the over the top and over the bottom. But that also mean an inch was enough space because if I placed this say in 
a little bit more than an inch above, then I was left with gaps at the bottom, so. It also helps because your edge, you want your, you want your edge to be straight, and if you accidentally cut it a little bit crooked, you're going to have a, um, you're going to have a crooked edge that'll be harder to work with. But if you have extra, that crooked edge won't matter because it won't be seen. I hope I'm making sense. <laughs> I'm moving this so that the free edge that sticks off doesn't stick to this and pushing everything that's in the cupboard back so that it doesn't get in the way. Also, also don't fold over your don't fold over your edges until you've gotten the front completely done. Otherwise, when you you won't be able to lift it and reposition it. Easy. Now, when you do get air bubbles, unless they're really big ones, you can get rid of them by just pushing them with your hands. Try not to, try not to, or when you're trying to get rid of air bubbles, make sure your hand is flat. Otherwise, you could cause the contact paper, like one side of the air bubble to stick to the other side and cause like a crease. Now I'm pulling down a little bit as I go and smoothing, smoothing it out. So basically what I've done here, so I've cut a square or a rectangle out of it so that the hood fits. It's slightly, I still have a tiny bit left to cut, but you'll see how I fold it over and it will hide it a bit. Another tip I have when you're folding the edges over is that you don't want to just take it and fold it. You want to you want to almost use your fingers and bend it over like this, so that you don't get a uh, air bubble in the on the edge. Now the corners. What I'll do is so this side I fold it over. So I'm going to cut a, a line right here on the corner so that. One side can kind of how you would wrapping paper go like this, and the other side would fold over top. So now to fold over this edge and the bottom edge, I'm just going to pull the cabinet out a bit. on the bottom part. So first things first, I'm just folding it over.
some other time I might some other time I might cover the back, but for now I'm just worried about the front. So now we're reattaching the handles. So I found it's easy to take and find the screw hole in the front and stick the screw through just to get the hole poked here because it's going, it's not pushing against the pushing the paper off. thing about the drawers is they're small enough that scrap contact paper or pieces left over will work so I'm not using as much. We actually got one that's a little bit smaller. So I've used up all my smaller pieces but this is left over from the other roll. So we're just going to measure it out like we could have done with all the others. I would say this is a lot wider than I need it. So I'm just going to kind of see. Okay, my drawer ends here. So I probably want to a small space I can just unwrap it completely from the contact or from the back side and place it and smooth it out. It's a very small surface area. So we're gonna cut our corners. a little bit of the bottom because it's a little bit too Here's the completed drawer. So the kitchen is complete. Oh. Guys, I'm so happy. I never dreamed that this is how the cabinets would come out. I'm really, really, really excited. And leave some comments down below how you think I should bring some color into my kitchen because I do want some color. I just really didn't want red cabinets. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and I'll see you in my next video.